Takaro is highly skilled with his laser rifle. Fireballs, you're attacking! But prefers to work solo. I believe we're having poultry tonight. Flame broiled. These roads intersect on each one I reflect. These lines write my story. Welcome, everyone. I'm One True Brick, coming to you with a LEGO Exoforce review. This is set number 7700, The Stealth Hunter. It was released in 2006 for about $15 and has 164 pieces. For reference, nowadays, as of the making of this video, it can be anywhere from $25 to $35 on BrickLink and eBay, so keep that in mind if you are interested in buying this set after the review. So back when I was a wee nine-year-old, almost a decade and a half ago, during 2005, early 2006, I remember looking at the Brickmaster magazine and seeing this picture right here featured on the front of one of the magazines. And I thought to myself, boy, that looks kind of stupid. What's with the weird design and Japanese stuff? And I, I see the character inside has really large eyes and mouth. I didn't really understand because I hadn't seen any anime at the time, but something must have caught on because a few months later I got myself the Grand Titan and uh, within the few years that Exoforce was around, I purchased every single set. So as you can tell from the picture and the set itself, the set has some very Japanese-inspired design. There's lots of Japanese writing and Japanese symbols, and lots of anime-style design that's very reminiscent of Gundam. In fact, when I look at this set now in comparison to some of the Gundam shows that I've watched, I can tell that it is very reminiscent of the Double O Gundam. Exoforce was responsible for bringing lots of unique color schemes to sets. Um, lots of combinations of colors that you normally wouldn't see paired together on a set. For example, this set pairs white and blue together, but in fact, there is not hardly a single blue part on this set. Most of these, right here, are actually stickers. Now, this may be enjoyable to you, it may not. I personally like the ability to have the stickers on there because it means that you can place them on different parts. If you get extra stickers off of the internet or order them from Lego, you have the ability to put them on different parts and create different designs that you normally wouldn't have the option of doing if you had a printed part. However, on the flip side, you also have to deal with the issue of placing them perfectly straight as you're putting them on and then over time they do have a tendency to wear a little bit more as you can tell from that shoulder piece right there but i personally like the ability to have the stickers so obviously one of the biggest appeals of this line was the nice posability and functionality that you got in each set keep in mind this set only retailed for about 15 dollars back when it came out and nowadays even with lego's increased prices it probably still would be around 20 dollars and that's an insane amount of functionality you get in this set every single shoulder elbow hip knee and ankle is posable, as well as you get the posability of these wings. So you get lots of dynamic poses that you normally wouldn't get it in any kind of set outside of maybe construction, which would include like Bionicle and Knight's Kingdom. So you can get lots of really nice poses with sets like this. You can fold the wings around, you can aim the, the weapon. You could also hang this from the ceiling and have it be flying as the set is a flying set. And all around you get lots of functionality for such a small set. Speaking of which, as I set that back up again, this set has a couple functions functions in it aside from the posability. So first of all, you have the ability to open the cockpit here and have the pilot come out. And then also, the main gimmick of this particular wave of sets was the ability to light up. Now, I'm going to real quick show you guys what that would look like 
It's really hard to tell with the lights on, so I'm going to shut them off for a second here. And I am going to move this piece. So the way it works is there was a little lever on the back of the set that you would push down on, and the whole internal mechanism of the set would bend to press the button inside, lighting up the brick and the tube and all the way down to a laser sight at the end there, as you can see. Quick flip the light back on. So it was a very interesting design and the way they go about it, now with the lights back on, you can see they have this lever on the back that you push down on. It's really hard to tell with the light, but this one is fully charged. And one of the biggest complaints that I saw from people when it came to these sets was that you'd have these light bricks die pretty early on. That's actually a really bright one. Here's an example of one that is basically pretty much completely dead. Now I'm going to be posting a video on this channel of how to actually replace that battery. It only costs about $10 to buy a pack of 15 of these small batteries. They are a 3 volt CR927 and you can get a huge pack of them for pretty inexpensive cost. And then you just need a, a screwdriver to pop some tabs on the brick to get it to open up and you can throw a new battery in there and it's good as, as new. Now, unfortunately I have to do, I do have to call that a con in the design because unfortunately it's not exactly the easiest thing to do. And as a kid, I would never dream of opening up a, a electronic Lego part and trying to replace it. So unless you had parents who were tech savvy and kind of knew how to do it themselves, Lego didn't really give you an easy way to replace these batteries. And I wish they had given that as an option as the batteries did have a tendency to die pretty quick. I honestly had several that died within one to two years and I barely pressed on them at all. Stuff like that fall off. Unfortunately, because of the way it's designed, there's not really a lot of avoidability and you trade off the stability of the set in order to get more posability. So I'm going to pop this guy out. And this minifigure's name is Hikaru. Now, as you can see, so one of the major parts of these minifigures is that they had uh, large eyes and mouth design. Now this is his one-sided face and there's actually a second side on the back that you can see there where he's kind of grimacing or glaring at something, kind of a, an action-oriented uh, facial expression for the character. Now because this was made back in 2006, um, Lego hadn't really gotten into the habit of doing lots of printing, so you will see that only the face and the front of the torso are printed, but they still have a very unique design with an O1 on the front there and then Hikaru's own logo on the opposite side. And then this hair piece right here is actually a rubber mold so that you can get a little bit of, I guess, bumpiness in, in the design. It also ends up being in a color that you normally would not have. He's got some nice goggles there to kind of show that he's a pilot as well. Now, one of the biggest draws of the Exoforce Exo line, along with their design um, and nice posability, was the fact that they had lots and lots of combination and alternate models. And this set is actually probably the most extreme of those. It has one alternate model and at least three or four different combination models, the most popular of which can be seen in the back of this instruction manual here. By the way, there's the instruction manual there. And the very last page, we can see this model right here, which is called the Mountain Warrior, and it can be built by combining this set along with the Grand Titan, which I will be taking a look in addition to that, there were some instruction manuals given in magazines, that same magazine I showed you earlier, shortly after a comic. There are some instructions right here to combine it with the Fire Vulture in order to get an alternate model. And there were actually a few others given online that you can check out for yourself if you'd like. I will be posting a link to the Exoforce Wiki, which has a nice 
amount of sources for you to find various building instructions and stuff if you'd like to take a look at those. So in addition to all of the review of the set, I wanted to go over some of the story content for this set as well, because one of the reasons why I liked Exoforce so much is because it has such an expansive story, probably only rivaled by that of Bionicle. Most LEGO lines had maybe an ad here or there, and you could kind of tell the general plot of the story, like with Galaxy Squad and Mars Mission, there's kind of like a uh, humans versus aliens kind of theme going on, but there really isn't a fleshed out story. Exoforce got a total of seven books, as well as a comic series that you can read online um, that kind of flesh out the characters and the story in a way that most LEGO lines didn't get. And some of the content that um, this particular battle machine was involved in um, that I wanted to go over is it was the first battle machine ever produced by the Exoforce team. Uh, specifically designed for combat. It was commonly used in fighting fire vultures, so because it was an air-style uh, uh, battle machine, it was used specifically for fighting air-style robot battle machines. It was the first ever mass-produced large-scale battle machine. It has a special ability that allows it to cloak itself, so while it's flying, it can actually cloak itself from radar, making it invisible to robots. However, the trade-off of this, according to one of the books, is that you lose about 50% of your firepower and maneuverability, meaning that it would mostly only make sense if you were wanting to be stealthy and sneaking up on an enemy. Just instantly turning it on while you're in the middle of a fight wouldn't provide you much of an advantage. It was specifically used in a mission by Hikaru to go over to the robot side of the mountain to rescue another member of the Exoforce team's family, Takeshi, um, and he used it to fight off an enemy machine called the Sonic Phantom, which will be shown later down the line, and it is one of the most dangerous robot battle machines ever, and he was able to beat it using his Stealth Hunter. A lot of people have asked what these symbols up here mean. Each battle machine has its own letter and number, and that will tell you a little bit about what the machine's um, features are. And the A01 means air, and it's the first air unit produced by Exoforce. So there's some fun facts about the storyline related to this, and if you'd like to find out more, you can head over to the link below to the wiki and read the comics. And at some point, um, probably shortly after this, I intend to do audiobooks of several of the Exoforce books so that you guys can experience the story similar to the way I did, because they're a little bit hard to get your hands on. All right. Thank you guys very much for watching this video review of the Stealth Hunter. I will be back next week to review the Fire Vulture. You guys have a good day. Bye. Probably the most notable aspect of this build is this giant turbine that it's got on the back, kind of indicating that this vehicle is able...